Hi there. Just to accompany my uh, written reviews in a couple of different magazines uh, in the shops very shortly, in the next month or so. Um, this is of the Airgun Technologies Vulcan 2 rifle. I uh, thought I'd give you a little video review of the rifle. Just a, a short, sharp review. Right, so when you buy the Vulcan 2, you get a large rectangular cardboard box. And within that, you find a large rectangular gun slip. This one has zip on three sides and a pair of large handles, a bit like shopping bag handles, and these are big enough to go over the shoulder. Um, so within the bag, you find a book of accessories. There's uh, an operations manual and another leaflet with some other uh, rifles in it. Um, you find this rather splendid rifle. Um, you can see it's been held by uh, a Velcro strap here, and this Velcro loop in itself is held by other Velcro that runs along the bag, and there's another one at the fore end. Um, so I'll keep things quite secure in whatever configuration you have the rifle. Um, this rifle was kindly loaned to me by Lloyd of Blackpool Air Rifles. Thanks, Lloyd. And um, he wasn't sure that the rifle would actually, so the rifle case would actually fit a scope as well as the, uh, the rifle itself. And as you can see, this is the rather fantastic Discovery Optics um, HD34. So it's a, a chunky 34mm scope tube. This is the HD34 3 to 18 by 50 scope. It's uh, side wheel parallax and it's first focal plane. And I've already reviewed this um, for Airgun World magazine. Um, oh, and you can see rather unusually here, I've got a single scope, um, scope mount, side mounted with a little bracket from ANT Supplies. Put the link to that below. So to allowing you to side mount a laser range finder. Excellent stuff. So we have a very compact rifle. The length is um, 765 millimeters um, and uh, very handy. There's lots of room to spare in this rucksack. Um, a fantastic stock is um, laminate and it's, it's very smooth to the touch. It's got a thermal satin varnish finish. Um, you see that from the, the reflections, you see the palm swell in this. Ambidextrous grip, thumb hole stock with a generous palm swell. We've got nice checkering, nice sharp checkering on both sides of the forend. Underneath the forend, there's an accessory rail fitted, flush fitted, which to which I've added a number six Harris accessory stud. And this basically lets you fit either a bipod or a sling swivel um, to, this, uh, to this point. Um, there's no rear stud. But uh, if this were my rifle, I'd be ad adding one myself, probably here and another about here. You can see V2, calibre 5.5, max pressure 250 bar. And uh, underneath, we have the uh, magazine well, taking a, a sort of square machined alloy magazine. And also here, you can see all the action screws on the Vulcan 2 are Torx head, so very positive. There's an unbroken cheek piece, which has a slightly, very, very slightly rough finish. It's not too cold to the touch. The magazine doesn't interrupt the cheek piece. So as you'll see in a minute, you can attach optics. Eye relief is required, as you've got a long, generous cheek piece. The sight razor rail is quite compact and Picatinny type. And uh, here, there's a panel and you see four, four more Torx head screws. This is on both sides and remove four screws on each side and a fifth one here. And you can pivot, you can swap the side lever action from left side to right side. When it's fully withdrawn, fully cocked, then you can insert, insert a magazine. And on the far end, just see it through there, you've got a brass detente for the magazine which is sprung, keeps the magazine very positively in place. And there's a slightly raised rear section to the barrel and that fits in with a keyway on the side of the front face of the magazine, make it, meaning you can only insert the magazine one way. The rifle is also decockable. 
which I've just done. So, and the safety is forward to fire and rear to work for safe. That's one very nice rifle. There's a, a chunky, quite a chunky um, shroud to the front of the barrel from the front half of the barrel from the um, action block forwards. And I'll put the diameter of that below. And an even more chunky, slightly, uh, air reservoir, which is colder to the touch. And that is nice and clear regarding the onboard pressure, available pressures. Within the uh, company and leaflet, the manual, operations manual, you have various standard safety instructions and including instructions as to how to, um, rather rudimentary, but basic instructions as to how to swap the uh, cocking lever from left to right side. Um, and also how to unscrew the moderator for a servicing. At the front, there's a knurled cap which, which uh, protects the fill port cover. So you turn that around to insert the fill probe here. And there's also a second knurled cap on top of the end of the shroud. And if you undo this, it exposes a uh, M14 by 1.25 millimeter thread um, so you can add there we go and you can add additional moderation if required though this this fell is so quiet with this chunky barrel shroud that uh, I can't see additional moderation being required unless you went for an FAC variant the manual also indicates the safety function lubrication guidelines and cleaning guidelines and has an exploded parts diagram so you can see everything that's inside um, on the back page we have the rest of the uh, parts list and also instructions and diagrams of how to release the pressure from the reservoir using this plug and also the removal tool that's within the supplied box Inside the box, we have the fill kit, which is, I think it's about a 350ml micro bore hose, the probe with two O-rings for the filling, for filling up the air reservoir, and at the other end, there's a threaded connector for a standard air bottle, dive bottle, and the knurled uh, knob at the other end is for bleeding after you've filled the uh, filled the gun and then closed the valve on your air bottle. What else is in the box? Well, we have the two 12-shot magazines, with this being a 2-2. We have a key ring, a pen, and the tool to bleed the air reservoir. And a little small um, bag with uh, two O-rings which I believe are for the fill probe. Magazine itself here, very simple, very nicely made, very nicely machined. You can see here the caliber designation and the slotted keyway, which is what fits in so for inserting the magazine, like so. To fill the magazine, you can see there's a hole right through the hole on the, the aft face is actually eccentric, so you rotate the magazine anti-clockwise, dropping in a pellet at a time, such that they can't fall all the way through. So you position it like so, and then keep rotating it, pellet at a time. And then when you get to the the very last, when you get to the last pellet, you have to stop the hole with your finger to prevent the last pellet falling through. And then when you release your thumb, the last pellet is retained with spring pressure. Very nicely made and also four Torx head screws on the magazine as well. Very nice piece of kit. The only, the only slight downside is the rear of it is open so you could potentially, if you're easily knocking around in your pockets when you're out hunting, you could get fluff and grit and stuff in the back of the pellets. One other thing, as this is very much 
a full size rifle. 76 centimeters long is compact, but with a heavyweight scope, chunky scope like this up top, it weighs about 10 pounds. So I wanted to show you how it looks with a, a chunky, large chunky scope mounted. And uh, I'll insert a, a photo run about here showing how it looks in the shoulder with this very scope on. Um, and then I'm going to pop in a smaller scope for contrast. So here's the rifle unscoped from the nailed muzzle cap, nailed fill pot cover, right of the, um, the nailing. And you can see I've protected the woodwork with a piece of card while I've got a bipod temporarily fitted. Um, got the Torx head screws covering the uh, cocking mechanism. I've got the beautiful laminate woodwork and that, that full, full grip with a full palm swell on both sides. Lovely laminate stock and immaculate metalwork. With a, uh, a grooved butt pad at the rear. And just for completeness, here's the view from the other side showing the right hand side where the magazine is inserted. Again, Tox head screws throughout. Vulcan 2 name and Picatinny rail and then from there forwards a shrouded barrel and a reservoir, a chunky, long chunky reservoir and you look how generous that reservoir is that's how this fella has enough air in 2.2 for about 200 shots per fill in fact oh, just over 200 shots Chrono figures uh, legal limit with sorry, 15.89 grain JSB exacts is 583 feet per second. Um, I chronoed an entire 245 bar fill down to 110 bar and got 16 12 shot mags out of that, which is 192 shots. The feet per second variation was single figures, 580 to 589 for the bulk of that. It did drop a little bit temporarily in the middle to 545 ish. But that's probably my fault for cycling the action too rapidly. I was getting bored. Um, so very, very consistent. That many shots, 192 shots out of an average fill, average fill cycle. Fantastic. Accuracy wise, well, I'll upload some photos around about here of my friends at Grand Pioneer Rifle Club, Gark, trying the, the Vulcan 2 out on the range. And basically, I, due to my own issues and weather at the time, I couldn't stretch its legs out on the 50 meter range, but um, indoors at 25 meters, basically all the pellets go through the same hole. So this rifle is all you need accuracy wise in a sub 12 foot pound rifle. It's listed to give 210 shots in 2.2 from a full fill and 180 shots in 177. Fantastic. Two other calibers available, mainly if they see. Uh, and here for a complete contrast, the other end of the spectrum is the Vulcan 2 wearing a very compact PARD 008 LRF day and night scope. Um, fastened effortlessly with the Picatinny rail. And you can see here the PARD looks perfectly at home. PARD's more of a reach back mount, but again, you have lots of room on the uh, Vulcan 2's excellent cheek piece for the minimal eye relief scope um, and uh, yeah that looks that looks awesome this is how I would use this rifle if it was mined for pest control um, and it will save a fair bit of weight with this scope full HD day and night capability too with a built-in IR illuminator that looks very much at home